Hello, I'm Janine Cummins. This is my new novel, American Dirt. It's the story of Lydia Perez, who is a bookseller in Acapulco, Mexico. She has a comfortable middle-class life. She has a wonderful marriage and a beautiful little boy, eight-year-old Luca. And then one day, there is an unspeakable act of violence that befalls her family. And sort of in an instant, Lydia becomes a migrant. She falls out of her middle-class life and discovers that she is among the invisible people. And um, so really this book, American Dirt, is the story of Lydia's journey across Mexico with her eight-year-old son in their efforts to get to the relative safety of the United States of America. Um, you know, it's the story of how a middle-class woman finds herself in a position where she sort of instantly becomes a person whose human rights are inconsequential. And it's also the story of all the people she meets along the way, um, other migrants who are potentially what readers will probably think of as more typical migrants, um, younger Central American characters who are also trying to get to the United States, and they're all running from various things, um, various problems, violence, poverty, and they're all hoping for a better life. Um, and a welcome in the United States. So I'm here in Waterstones Piccadilly and I would like to share with you three of my favorite books. The first of which is The Round House by Louise Erdrich. Uh, Louise is an incredible writer. She's a Native American writer. She uh, won the National Book Award for a previous book, but this is the one of her books that spoke the most deeply to me personally. Um, I mean, all of her books are sort of about family and redemption and how we survive things that, are, that feel unsurvivable. This book in particular, the, the narrator is a 13-year-old boy and his mother has just suffered a, a horrific trauma. So it really feels to me like it's the story of this kid who has to sort of grow up overnight because of what's happening in his family. And it's also the tale of how proximity to trauma can be its own kind of trauma. And yet no one in this book is broken. It's sort of how they survive. I mean, maybe that's not entirely true. <laughs> um, but it's how, it's the survival tactics of how they pull together as a family and how they sometimes let each other down as a family in the aftermath of this horrible, horrible thing that happens. And it's just a very beautiful book. I finished it on an airplane as I was coming home from some business trip somewhere. And when I got off the plane, I had to go to my car and sit there for a half an hour before I could drive myself home because I was just so overwhelmed by um, the, the incredible emotions in this book. So you should all read it. So this is book number two, Love in the Time of Cholera by Gabriel Garcia Marquez. Everyone loves this writer, but most people will tell you that 100 Years of Solitude is his greatest masterpiece, and they are wrong. This book, <laughs> Love in the Time of Cholera, is such a beautiful book. I love Gabriel Garcia Marquez's language, the way he uses words, he can pack like 50 or 100 words into one sentence and never lose you. His language is just so beautiful and stunning. And there's something so incredibly redemptive about this book. It's the story of um, a young man and young woman who sort of fall in love with each other and then the young woman recognizes that it's actually just a crush and she goes and marries someone else. And then the young man sort of goes off the rails and spends his entire life kind of being a maniac because he just is so regretful about losing this woman. And I won't give away what happens in the end, but let's just say that Marquez shows us that one should never give up hope. So it's a really great book and also read 100 Years of Solitude, but this is the real one. This is the real one. So for my last choice, we've come upstairs to the young adult section. And I'm super envious of you if you have not read this book yet because you have such an adventure ahead of you. Roll of Thunder, Hear My Cry 
this is a book that probably more than any other book is responsible for my life as a writer. Um, I read this book when I was in sixth grade in the United States, which is, I guess, 11, 12 years old. And um, it absolutely blew my mind. It, I think it changed my life. It's the story of um, a family living in the Deep South after slavery and th the way they encounter and face racism in their community. But the really incredible thing about this book is that Mildred D. Taylor puts you inside the skin of these characters in a way that just absolutely makes you feel like not just that you have simple empathy for them, but that you are living their experiences. Um, and when I finished reading this book, I felt as though I was Cassie Edwards. I was that little girl that I fully understood um, the sort of rigors and horrors of racism in the United States and, and how much people have had to endure and continue to have to endure in our country um, based on the color of their skin. But really also, that makes it sound like a really serious book, and it is. There's a lot of heavy lifting in this book, but it's also just like this beautiful story of this family and these characters that you come to love. So read it and make sure all the children in your life also read it. It's a wonderful book.